This video is about TBI, or traumatic brain injury. Injury to the brain that is traumatic, meaning serious and or sudden in nature. Traumatic brain injury occurs when the normal function of the brain is disrupted. This can happen because of a bump to the head, a blow to the head, a jolt to the head, or when something penetrates the head. A TBI can be as mild as a concussion, which may or may not involve loss of consciousness or memory loss. A TBI can also be very severe, leading to major lifelong problems or even death. Severe TBIs involve loss of consciousness and memory loss. The main causes of TBI are falls, motor vehicle crashes, including ATVs, being struck by an object or struck against an object, and intentional self-harm, such as suicide or suicide attempts with a firearm. We will discuss risk factors, symptoms, and what happens after a TBI. Importantly, New Mexicans have higher rates of TBI each year than the national average, and we need your help. We cannot reduce TBI rates or improve quality of life after TBI without the participation of our community. So who can have a TBI? Anyone at any age can have a TBI, but for the rest of this video, we will be talking about adults. People over 65 years of age are particularly at risk for TBI. The main cause of those TBIs in older adults is falls. Motor vehicle crashes are the main cause for people aged 15 to 34 years old and people over 75 years old. And intentional self-harm, usually with a firearm, is the main cause of TBI for people aged 45 to 64 years. More men than women have TBI. This is a good time to point out that the CDC reports a lot of valuable information, but they are underestimates. For example, the numbers do not include people who receive care at a federal facility, such as military personnel. Also, the numbers do not include those TBIs that are not reported, which may happen in rural areas, on tribal lands, in cases of domestic violence, and for those who experience homelessness. Lastly, while CDC recognizes TBI in people in jail or prison as an important health problem, we do not have exact numbers. Now that you know the causes, you probably realize that TBIs can be prevented. So let's talk about risk factors so we can work together to prevent TBI. Some risk factors you cannot change. For example, being male is a risk factor. And being within certain age ranges is also a risk factor. Having had a previous TBI is a risk factor. It is important to be aware that these factors increase risk even if the factors cannot be changed. Other risk factors that are changeable include alcohol or substance use and abuse, participation in activities that involve contact or collision, having jobs or being in environments that involve weapons or violence, including being in unstable, violent relationships. Another risk factor is unsafe driving and other risk-taking behaviors. Another risk factor is significant depression or history of suicidal thoughts. Some groups may be more at risk for certain causes of TBI. In Native American or Alaskan Native men, there are increasing rates of suicide or suicide attempts. They also had the highest rates of motor vehicle crashes. Black and African American men have a much greater risk of dying or injury from firearm-related TBIs than all other races. Also, because of their higher rates of incarceration, they are more likely to experience TBI in those settings. These risks for Native American and Alaskan Native men and Black and African American men are largely related to a combination of social and economic inequalities, rural and healthcare disparities, and other associated stressors 
that people of racial and ethnic diversity experience while living in the United States. In white men, the past several years have shown increasing rates of suicide or suicidal attempts. While falls are listed as the official main cause of TBIs in women, domestic violence has been called a silent epidemic, and the majority of victims are women. Though TBI in military personnel and in athletes receives much attention, more women are victims of TBI because of domestic violence than those two groups combined. Falls are a major cause of TBIs in elderly people. Also, the exact numbers of TBIs because of physical elder abuse are not known, and elder abuse is more likely to happen to women. To reduce risk, talk to your doctor about management of your medical conditions if they are risk factors. For example, if you have mobility, balance, or vision issues that may increase your fall risk or impair your driving ability. If you are on medicines that cause dizziness or drowsiness, and if you have mental health issues or illnesses, especially if you are experiencing significant depression or suicidal thoughts. Pause here if you need to talk to someone now or pause to write this phone contact information for later use. To reduce risk, reduce use of alcohol and other substances. Wear protective gear, but know their limitations and do not let them give a false sense of security or protection. While they may help prevent skull fractures, they do not prevent brain injury that occurs when the brain bounces around inside of the skull. Reduce your risk with safe driving practices and reduction of risk-taking behaviors. Take fall prevention measures. Reduce exposure to weapons and violence. Get away from violent environments and relationships, though that is easier said than done and doing so may require help. For victims of domestic violence, pause here if you need to talk to someone now or pause to write down this phone contact information. For victims of elder abuse, pause here. How do I recognize a TBI? Many TBIs are obvious. They involve a lot of head trauma, loss of consciousness, and memory loss. However, a majority of TBIs are mild and can too easily be ignored or overlooked. It is important to look out for the following common conditions to make sure proper medical care is delivered. The problems experienced after TBI will depend on where the brain was damaged. Certain parts of your brain are specialized for certain functions and they all work together to help you function normally. Working together is made possible by important connections between brain areas. Think of them as connecting highways or extensive telephone systems that help these areas communicate. Different locations of damage to these specialized areas and their communication lines will lead to different problems. There are some common physical conditions such as headache, dizziness and balance problems, nausea or vomiting, fatigue and problems with sleeping. Someone may also have sensory issues such as sensitivity to light, noise, or smell. More severe TBIs might involve muscle weakness or paralysis, problems producing speech sounds called dysarthria or apraxia of speech, or feeding and swallowing problems called dysphagia. Common emotional or behavioral conditions include mood swings, depression, anxiety, and irritability. Another condition after TBI is kind of in the name. A traumatic brain injury often is, well, traumatic. It may involve a brush with death or a violent situation, and this can lead to post-traumatic stress disorder, which can happen in both military personnel and in civilians. There are also common cognitive conditions that impact thinking, remembering, and communicating, like attention, memory, and problem solving. These cognitive problems can also make communicating with others very hard. For example, attending to the conversation, 
remembering what someone said, interpreting humor or emotion. When these problems happen, it is called cognitive communication disorder. People may also have problems with language called aphasia, like this man who has a hard time finding the right words to say. A TBI survivor may experience one of these problems, or they may experience several of these problems. Common conditions will improve the most in the period of time immediately after the TBI. Some problems may still persist and become chronic disabilities. Importantly, this is called the chronic recovery phase which means that even though problems have persisted, and even though recovery may be slower, recovery of functions can still happen for many, many years after the TBI. To optimize recovery, it is important to work with a team of professionals, such as neurologists, neuropsychologists, rehabilitation professionals, mental health professionals, social workers, and vocational rehabilitation. To optimize recovery, it is also important to use available community resources, for example, brain injury groups and groups that focus on a particular disability. And tapping into federal and state human services departments and resources, including disability benefits from Social Security. To optimize recovery, it is important to have the support of family members, friends, and community and to remember that the impact of TBI extends beyond the survivor, rippling outward to family members or friends who may be serving as care partners. Caring for someone with TBI is often associated with increased strain, burden, and stress. Care partners may have negative changes in their physical activity, social activity, mental health, and their employment and financial stability. An informed community is a healthier community. We must work together to prevent death and disability after TBI, especially here in New Mexico, where we face higher risks. We can work together to help those impacted by TBI do what we all want to do, live life and live it fully. Thank you for watching. This project was funded by the New Mexico Brain Injury Advisory Council, a program of the State of New Mexico Governor's Commission on Disability. Funding was awarded to Dr. Jessica Richardson at the University of New Mexico. Her team developed content and spearheaded design, working closely with the Office for Community Health. The wonderful artwork was completed by Vince Collier from PowerPlay Graphics. We hope you enjoyed this video and that you share it with others who may benefit from watching it.